were there any findings that surprised you that kind of went against what you thought? I guess like a, a lot of them went against what I thought because it was like, like even something like the liking gap or the gratitude gap. I guess because I, I probably carried those false intuitions that like I'd always had that, you know, anxiety, like is it okay to compliment or yeah. to compliment people a lot or is it something that we should like hold back because we don't want to seem to gushing so I guess a lot of this research is kind of yeah it's kind of calibrating that and just giving you the kind of it's empowering you to feel like no it's okay I, I'm gonna do what I think is right and you know I'm gonna be braver um but yeah, yeah there were some things that like did really surprise me um so one concerns honesty and like obviously I know like to be a moral person you have to be honest you shouldn't be like betraying people you know like that is that is obvious but I guess I'd assumed that like little white lies like massaging the truth you know maybe avoiding giving negative feedback unless it's like absolutely necessary I'd kind of thought those things were important for maintaining social connection yeah yeah that is a complex area but the research is pretty yeah what is the finding there was this study that just said to like kind of split the participants into different groups. Some were told to just focus on being as honest as they could be, like to never lie within a, a kind of three-day period. The others were told to be either to go about their daily business as normal or to be as kind as they could be. Um, so just try to do what you can to like make people feel good and to, to serve them as well as you can. I had totally expected that the kind of kind group would come off best, that they would feel the greatest social connection, that they would feel best about themselves I kind of thought the honest group would end up having really difficult interactions that would you know would back, it would backfire quite badly but mm -hmm. that wasn't what the researchers found at all that actually um whether you were being honest or whether you were being kind like both of those led to better social interactions than just carrying on as people would have done normally um and that actually those in the honest group uh, what really stood out was that they really appreciated how meaningful the interactions became like even when the interactions were quite difficult they still felt like it was better to have been honest than to have kind of told those white lies like they would have normally done yeah and there's just so much research then that backs that up that shows that you know in the workplace wherever like just giving honest negative feedback we assume people are going to resent us for that that they're not going to want to hear it um but people just really appreciate your bravery for telling the truth it's not an excuse to just like be like brutally rude i i really strongly believe that you can be honest and tactful at the same right. time and you can say and the nicest you know you can still try to be constructive you can offer to help if you think like it is going to have like damaged someone's confidence you can try to uh, emphasize all of the kind of you know ways they can learn from this and improve um, i think that's all really important but that can only happen if you do act honestly um mm -hmm. and that's just not possible if you just kind of cover it up and tell that white lie i like that this is a scientific research that has found this because it is something that i think some people are raised to think oh it's good to like tell white lies and it, it's not hurtful but i think being honest takes so much courage but when when you're honest even if you're saying something negative it opens it, it's like you're being vulnerable. And then once you open up your vulnerability, it allows other people to open up, right? And then that builds like a more honest, true connection. Yeah, that's exactly it. And actually, I'm so glad you mentioned vulnerability because there's a related um, phenomenon called the beautiful mess effect. And this is just that we, you know, like we assume that if we reveal the things that make us feel weak or vulnerable, that we're going to be judged badly for that, that people are going to, kind of feel alienated by it so you know like if you've really screwed up with your work and you know it's like if you've made a bad error that you're kind of ashamed of um you know you like you just hate telling people about that but actually people see a lot of courage in owning up to that and like that's the prevailing like emotion that people are experiencing is admiration for your courage and honesty like we just value honesty so much in relationships that um and we just underestimate that like there was another study looking at kind of people's attitudes to dating and they found that say like if someone had acted like really horrifically in the past like um that knowingly 
like slept with people when they had an STD. Um, admitting to that fact was still favorable to like refusing to answer the question, like because oh, yeah. that yeah. just seemed so much more dishonest, e- even if though you don't actually know the truth behind that. But just, you know, it could be that so, even if you're like totally clean, but you're for some reason refusing to tell the truth, it's just the assumption that there's something that you're hiding that there's some kind of dishonesty there is like just considered yeah like it's um a real turnoff for for anyone who wants to to build any kind of social relationship with you Mm -hmm. so you're saying it's it's better to be honest rather than you know how some people think it's good to be mysterious and not let people know too much about themselves so so this is saying no show show everything the ugly parts (laughs) Yeah, it's exactly that. And, you know, we have so many kind of tricks that we can try to play to avoid lying, but to avoid telling the truth. So, right. you know, like if someone asks you a question, you can try to deflect the question or you can, you can kind of say something that is true, but isn't answering the question, you know, all of these things. But people are very sensitive to that. They kind of know what you're doing and they judge you badly for it. Whereas, like you said, if you just say the truth, even if it's not especially favorable or flattering, that is still ultimately um, better for the relationship in the long run. Okay, I think you also have some a concept where you you say it's a simple technique to resolve arguments. <laughs> Can you tell us about that? You know, I think we all know, <laughs> like a lot of us just are not good at um, in the middle of a fight with someone. We're not good at seeing the big picture, at kind of uh, considering the other person's point of view. Like we each party gets very defensive and often we focus on like these tiny details. It's like we have this kind of microscopic attention that makes even like the smallest kind of things like the, you know, particular words someone said, we start to kind of blow up and, and, you know, think that is like the most important thing in the world. Um, And that's why we struggle to apologize, struggle to find resolution. What this strategy called psychological distancing does is it just like, it's like allowing you to take that step back. It's almost like, you know, like how you might feel like days, weeks, or months after the event when you're like, I don't know why, you know, you just can't understand anymore why an argument happened. Um, just trying to get you to that kind of more philosophical point. Um, and it's very easy to, to achieve actually. So, I mean, put simply like, um, you just try to imagine yourself in a different perspective. So you could imagine being just an objective observer, looking at the scene, like when you're having this argument. You could imagine kind of putting yourself in the future, like in a year's time or 10 years time, and kind of just, you know, what will you just try to think, like what will my opinions be in, you know, 2025 or 2034? Just kind of go through that process, like a bit of like imaginative kind of role playing. And it really works. Like there was this study that took married couples, people who just, you know, newlyweds, um, who start arguing quite quickly, certainly. Um, And like for the first year, the researchers didn't do anything. They just tracked their relationship satisfaction. And there was this kind of steady decrease. It's, It's quite sad, but that is what happens often is people's satisfaction slowly goes down. And then kind of midway through, they taught people psychological distancing. And then they tracked their happiness for the rest, uh, for the next year. And what they found was that it just stopped that negative trajectory. That technique just helped them to kind of get over these arguments so much more easily that they maintained good relationship satisfaction. Um, people who weren't taught the technique just continued kind of along that kind of downward spiral. Wow, that's so interesting. So you're saying this distance, you're supposed to do this when you're in the argument, like take a moment and imagine yourself a year from now or some something like that. Like, is it, do you do it when you're in the argument or is, is it a reflection afterward? Right. I mean, I think ideally you could try to do it really quickly during the argument. You're right. But I also think a lot of arguments, you know, the problem is not necessarily that you said cross uh, crosswords in the moment, but it's like that sometimes it can linger for like hours or days or, you know, like that's when the resentment I think really starts to build actually is, you know, when it goes on for too long and when the bad feeling just kind of festers. So actually I think, you know, chances are you might not be able to do it in the middle of the argument because you're still feeling a bit too kind of angry or hurt. But, you know, if you kind of go for a walk around the block or, you know, 
you just like take a bit of time for reflection like straight afterwards. I think that's when it's ideal really, so that you can go back to the other person just with a more constructive mindset, recognizing what your faults might have been. You're better able to articulate kind of what had hurt you as well. Yeah. It just helps you to to navigate your way through that. It's not just about you kind of apologizing instantly because often sometimes we are have legitimate reasons to be annoyed. But it does allow us to focus on the things that really matter and separate them from the things that didn't matter and to express things in the, the most constructive way possible.